Anong isipin na masama? Baka nagandahan lang sa'yo. Tahan ka na ha. These were the exact words that were told to me as a five-year-old. Because the first experience I had with harassment was when I was five. I was catcalled and I was followed by a guy. Noong time na yun, siguro mga 30s na siya. Tapos sinundan niya ako sa, galing sa pool, pupunta sa CR, tapos pinitiyahan niya ako. Tapos nakatapat sa akin yung phone niya, tapos may flash. Tapos iniisip ko lang, parang okay, nakatingin ako sa'yo, parang hindi ka ba naiilang. But then again, I was five. So parang, syempre, hindi naman ako set sa kanya, so bakit siya mag-iilang? And then, hindi ko alam gagawin ko. So tumayo na lang ako, tapos umiyak ako. Tapos, yung ginawa ko nung time na yun, I caused a commotion as much as possible because I wanted to put all the attention to myself. And then, bago pa may nakarating, umalis na siya. So essentially, wala rin nangyari sa kanya. But, for me, they tried to comfort me with these words. Which, honestly, until now, hindi ko pa rin mag-gets kung ano yung like, point na dapat binibigay nila sa akin with this. Kasi, okay, huwag mo nalang isipin na masama. Is it better to live with knowing na, ano, hindi ko na yung gagawin niya doon is something that I wouldn't know about. Baka nagandahan lang sa'yo, makuha natin ba dapat ako doon? Tahan ka na ha, knowing that yung nagsabi sa'kin ito was someone who was for me an authoritative figure. Parang mas mataas yung belief ko sa kanila, ang taas na tingin ko sa kanila, tapos nasabihin nila ako na tahan ka na ha. Parang in my head, so mali ba yung pag-react ko in that sense? Well actually, new experience na to, this specific Um, statement. It's been said to me so many times since that happened, and it's not because this specifically, this specific like moment has haunted me since then. It's just because paulit ulit lang siya nangyayari, and I know that for a lot of women here, nangyayari na yun for um, us as well. Because di naman isolated to yun, eh, di ba? Lagi naman talaga siya nangyayari. In the Philippines alone in 2022, 9,000 na yung child abuse cases. And so, 72% of these are actually sexual abuse of children. And to think na parang, sige, contextualize natin to. Ito mga headlines, ay mga titles for YouTube videos. Paano mapapayag ang batang babae na may gawin kayo? At paano makaiyot ng bata? Kung hindi nyo alam yung ibig sabihin ng iyot, it means sex. Ang lala, di ba? But when you look at the comments, Oo, 29 na ako, GF ko, 12 pa lang. Tapos, 8 months na kami, secret relationship. Eh, di rin, di ba? Tol, paturo pa na naman pag 5 to 8 years old, paano mang uto? How is that something acceptable for us? And to think, okay, itong YouTube channel na to, usapang discard eh, you'd think na pag may nakakita dito, ultimately, agad-agad na matatanggal na agad yung videos. But it had to reach 250,000 subscribers and more than 1 million views bago matanggal yung channel. And syempre, parang okay, this is a topic na it's widely known. A lot of people know na child um, abuse, specifically sexual abuse, is something na nangyayari talaga. Ano naman kung may predators, di ba? Well, I wanted to shift the perspective and change it from the act itself, yung sexual abuse, and look at the children. Kasi parang sila na apektuhan. Why isn't anyone asking about them? So, let's start with this. Act your age. Are you guys familiar with the term? Diba, idiom naman yan. It's very common. Act your age. Essentially, sinasabi mo to pag um, yung sinasabihan mo, medyo immature. Along the same lines, mas ano naman to? Common for Filipino families. Bata ka pa lang, ganyan ka na maka-asta. Ito usually yung sinasabi pag like, yung parents mo nagagalit sa'yo. Tapos, magtatanong sila, nasasagot ka, tapos parang nagagalit sila, nasasagot ka. Parang, girl, ano mo nasasagot sa akin? Ano yun? But at the same time, ayun nga, bata ka pa lang, ganyan ka na maka-adsa. And in marketing and in uh, therapy clinics, actually, my term for this is called KGOY, Kids Getting Older Younger. Super common term niya and very self-explanatory. So kids getting older, younger, um, it's because of how much content and media that we consume as children. And we uh, usually, specifically siya and sa ads, most for, for the most part, but An example of this is Bratz dolls, hypersexualized Bratz dolls. So Barbie, doon nanood kayo, you'd know na yung backstory sa kanya, di ba? Uh, ginawa siya para magkaroon ng adult dolls for children. And then yung katumbas niya naman, may Bratz dolls naman na at that time, kaya lang sila ginawa because they wanted a more uh, specific 
approach to seeing how women should be for children. Tapos tuloy na bas yung brats, ang daming bumili. So naingit si Barbie. And ultimately, pati si Barbie, sinexualize na na rin yung doll niya, di ba? At mas malala pa, ito, recently, Balenciaga Bondage Bears. Oh my God. Isipin mo, girl, bear, lalagay mo sa BDSM. Pag may nagtanong na bata, parang, bakit yung bear ko nakatali? Parang, mommy, ano nangyayari? Oh, yung share, ano? Parang, bondage bears, girl. How are you supposed to explain this to a kid? Things like this, pag kinoconsume ng mga bata, they think na, ah, sige, if that's what I see, that must be the right thing. This is my, ano na, perspective now. And that's, that makes sense, di ba? Kasi in psychology, this is called observational learning. We learn to survive by copying other people. And so, pag sinusundan natin yung ibang tao, mas matututo tayo ng iba't ibang bagay. Pinari, we talk, we eat, we walk, we... Learn how to read emotions through copying other people. And so in observational learning, an example of this is Tony Fowler and yung anak ni Steronia. So Tony Fowler, very popular, as in, she's a dancer, and we all know uh, na yung way of dancing is very femme. And recently, nag-post sila ng video of Tyronia trying out a femme dance style as well. So nag-chair dance siya. And wala naman masama sa dance, di ba? It's a freedom of expression. That's how we uh, learn to express ourselves and we actually gain confidence by that. So 11 years old pa lang si Tyronia and her dancing actually helps her gain confidence. Pero, if you put it in the context na she's 11 years old and her video was posted for, on YouTube for an audience composed mostly of men. Uh, as in, Anong ini-imagine mo sa comment section? Ay sa comment section nun, parang makikita mo na agad na yung mga sinasabi ng mga tao. Syempre, parang ah, pipilahan ko na si Tyronia, wala pa siyang 18. Ah, yung katawan niya ganito, ganyan. Dapat pala matagal ko nang pinapanood yung channel na to. Sobrang sexualized ng ano, view nila kay Tyronia. Na parang at that age 11, pinagmumuo ko lang yung self-concept mo as a person. Because we base our self-concept off of the opinions of other people. And so, kung, for example, yung mga comments ay sinasabihin ka, ah, na dapat ganito yung maganda, ganito yung pangit, ganito yung dapat, ganito yung hindi, ganito yung tama, ganito yung mali. Ano na may isip mo, di ba? Paano mo bubuhuin yung sarili mong self-concept when you are presented with so many depictions of who you should be as a person? What if yung nagsabi pa nito is someone that you hold close to your heart? Someone that you respect. In psikolohi yung Pilipino, we learn that we respect our elders kasi meron tayong values of utang na loob and hiya. And even more, our family is one of the things that we value the most. Because according to Badana and Andel, family is a part of the very fabric of the Philippine society. So kunyari mga reunions, sasabihan ka ng mga titos and titos mo na para, okay, uy, Ang gwapo mo naman, siguro pag laki mo, ang dami mong papaiyakin. Ah, alam mo, kaya ka lang niya sinasaktan kasi may gusto siya sa'yo. Yung mga ganung concept, syempre parang iisipin mo, ah, okay, yung nagsabi sa akin ito was something, someone I respect. So yung opinions niya must be true. We view them as people of high ethos, di ba? Oh, ethos. Yeah, high ethos yung view natin sa kanila, di ba? So parang kung ano yung nakikita natin sa kanila, we internalize that. And once we internalize that, our self-concept turns into self-objectification. Gab touched on this earlier already. Self-objectification, hindi natin tao yung tingin natin sa sarili natin. We see ourselves as objects first before we are humans. And when someone tells us, ayun nga, huwag mo nalang isipin na masama, baka nagandahan lang sa'yo, tahan ka na. Anong iisipin mo pag pinagsabihan ka ng ganyan? Parang, Ah, so mali ba yung way of reacting ko? Mali ba yung sinabi ko? Kasi the way we respond tells them what is right and what is wrong. The way we respond to children tells them na ah, imbis na mali yung ginawa niya, mali yung ginawa mo. Because adult sexualize children, sila naman at the end of the day yung gumagawa talaga nito. They are sexualized children for revenue for sexual self-interest or generally kasi hindi nila alam yung effect ng ginagawa nila. And what does this do? It's at the expense of their childhood. So, 
At the end of it all, hindi naman kasi talaga sexual yung mga bata, di ba? They're not sexual beings, they're not meant to be exploited. And if we treat them as children, they will act as children. Because children are only as safe as we make their environment to be. So the question isn't, what if children acted their age? Bakit bata ka pa lang, ganyan ka na makasta? It turns into, what if children could act their age? Bata ka pa lang, kaya po protektahan na kita. Thank you.